Hello, brothers and sisters and Heart Dwells family. May you all receive grace for perseverance and faith as we praise the Lord for the things he's doing that we cannot see. I hope you all are enjoying the messages from Daddy's Speaking series. I know it has even blessed me as I've been able to revisit those words and find myself identifying with each soul he was talking to. Since I've been working on this series, amongst other things, these past couple of days, I had not really sought the Lord for a message. We have also been preparing for the ordination for our first Heart Dwellers Ghana priest, which has been exciting. The Lord put on my heart for us to do a novena to Our Lady of Africa for the intentions and preparation of our priest. With the novena comes novena weather, which is suffering and sacrifice to back up our prayers for the nine days. And I was feeling it on the fifth day. Father Ezekiel had been suffering all this week, which is leading up to May 1st, the Feast of Beltane, the second highest satanic feast day. That night he was feeling so weary and had no strength to suffer any more or go on. So we were praying for him fervently. And that evening I had a dream where I was talking to Mother Claire. I was sharing with her some rhemas I received, which I thought meant one thing, but she then turned to me and said, These rhemas are about attacks against the faith. Then when I woke up the following morning, I was feeling so empty, and thoughts from the enemy were bombarding me, that nothing had changed, and nothing will ever change. I was having deep feelings of loneliness, rejection, doubts, and feelings of wanting to give up. I realized these feelings had been building up for days, as I was being reminded of past wounds. I was struggling to have hope and faith in anything the Lord had promised. I ran to him during prayer, hoping he would pull me out of my pit. And after Holy Communion, I felt strengthened, but still had feelings of melancholy. So I'd offered up to the Lord and asked Blessed Mother to please help me have a heart and a spirit of gratitude instead of complaining. After prayer, I got some rhemas, and the first one read, In a pillar of a cloud I speak to you, and you hear my commandments, for I am gracious to you. The second said, I chose you the most broken and sin-sick priest, in order to fill your poverty with my gifts and to display my power in your weakness. <laughs> Interesting, a little bit of ouch. <laughs> and the last room is said, What does it matter to me what people say about me? I have long ago given up everything that concerns my person. My name is host or sacrifice, not in words, but in deeds and emptying of myself and becoming like you on the cross. Oh, good Jesus, my master. And that's from St. Faustina. I immediately thought, that may be the reason I'm feeling errors of rejection, is because I'm being talked about again. And this time I felt it wasn't the demons, but it could be my loved ones or friends from my past. I had received Psalm 55 as a rhema a couple of days earlier, and that is about David being betrayed by a close friend. I realized maybe Jesus wanted to talk with me, so I sat down to hear from him and get a message. When I sat back down before him in the Eucharist, I heard, I will confound your naysayers. I said, I'm here, Lord. Jesus began, I will confound your naysayers, my beloved one. I know this has been a tough journey for you and many of my brides. You all are weary in the battlefield with various temptations to give up and no longer believe in my promises or the words I've spoken to you. You're not the only one feeling hopeless and weary from this battle. Many arrows and assignments have been released on my body in this hour with strong temptations to give up. Why are they attacking you so hard? Because it is always the darkest before the dawn. Breakthrough is coming, and I know many of you have heard that time and time again, and waited to see things not move as fast as you desired. But breakthrough is indeed coming, and right around the corner. Mark my words, beloved one. This summer will be one of celebration and dancing as I confound your naysayers. Many of you have been scorned by loved ones concerning the vaccine and of the truth and what really happened during the election, as they mocked you and all my prophets spewing lies and defaming my character on top of it. To turn this country back into the hands of the rightful president will take time, my beloved ones, but a big event is coming where truth will be revealed to the masses as the present administration's motives and secret operations begin to be uncovered slowly but surely for the mess that it is. As an aside here, I want to share a dream one of our intercessors had. She saw a house with a huge tarp covering it, 
and on the outside it seemed massive and very nicely architected. However, the tarp all of a sudden began to slip off slowly and uncover what a mess it was, and finish with rubble amongst other things. After the dream, she merely felt a quickening from the Holy Spirit that it was about Biden's administration, that on the outside it seemed nice, but it would soon be uncovered for what it really is. Jesus continued, So be patient with me, my beloved ones. My timing is always perfect, and there's so many factors that play into an overturn of your government. So many will be affected. As I mentioned, there will be casualties. These souls are my children too, and I grieve over the decisions and grieve over every loss that will take place. That is why many of you continue to carry heavy crosses. It is for your nation, as it continues to hang in the balance. Your prayers are the deciding factors for many souls awakening to the truth and souls perishing. Please fight with me a little longer on the battlefield. You cannot see from your vantage point, but we are winning and will be victorious. To you, my little one, please trust me with every promise, even with this community. It is my work, and I'll bring it to fruition despite the scoffers and the criticism. Many times I close your ears to the knowing of what others say about you, and at times I permit the fiery arrows to hit you, and you feel it so keenly. So when you feel a sense of hopelessness, discouragement, and rejection from nowhere, many times you are under attack by the words of men whom you do not know of. That is the safest place for you to be, so you don't cast judgment. Forgive them, beloved. They know not what they do or say. They don't realize how it is impacting you and how I'll use it all for my glory. The rhema I gave you today was rightly so. You are the most sin-sick priest and broken one. But it is because of your poverty and trust in me that I'll use you to do great things and confound the wise. Continue to stay faithful. Praise me. Trust me. And be expectant for what I'm about to do. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you all, my brides. Persevere with me on this battlefield, and I will confound all your naysayers. That was the end of Jesus' message. Thank you for all who continue to donate towards the City of God's Secret Art Refuge community in Ghana. Every one of your donations and prayers are so very much appreciated. You make it possible for us to even help people now. Thank you. If you haven't followed us on Rumble yet, please follow us there. As I mentioned before to you guys, our Vimeo channel was taken down. And when this channel is permanently taken down, we don't want you to miss anything. So please subscribe to our channel there. And we're working on a BitChute channel as well. You can also follow us on our Instagram page and on our Facebook page. Thank you guys. God bless you family until the next message.